Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about this really exciting project known as Superbit. A project that might help us replace the aging Hubble telescope and a project that might allow us to create a lot of telescopes with extremely powerful observational techniques. A project that's been in the works for the past 5 years or so. But it's not going to be a space telescope that's going to require a lot of planning and a lot of funding. It's actually going to be a telescope using a brilliant design from NASA using a balloon. Something that NASA has been thoroughly testing for the past 5 years and something that has already successfully been tested. But the new implementation of this telescope right here known as Superbit is so far the most exciting. This is literally something that could one day replace Hubble. And so let's talk a little bit more about this and how all of this works. But first, here's what it already was able to achieve. This beautiful picture of the pillars of creation, even though it might look like it was taken by Hubble telescope, was actually taken by Superbit. And this is around 3 years ago when the mission was just testing its capabilities. Since then, the international team from Durham University, Toronto University and Princeton Universities have successfully teamed up with NASA and Canadian Space Agency to make this a reality. They officially are planning to launch this mission and to have it work full-time in April of 2022. Which also means that we might enter a completely new era of space observation. And so first of all, this is an entirely new kind of an astronomical telescope. Unlike a typical ground observatory that's usually located somewhere in Chile, somewhere on top of the mountains, mostly because there is less atmosphere there, or the typical commercial telescopes you might have at home or might be able to purchase in a store, Superbit has one main advantage. It does not have to deal with atmosphere. As you probably know by looking at, for example, our own moon from planet Earth, you typically have to deal with a lot of different air turbulence. And this of course creates a lot of difficulties if you want to have a really sharp picture of some sort of a distant object. Here's for example different types of turbulence influencing the observations of the nearby Sirius A. And so because of this, modern telescopes either are built really high up where there's less atmosphere or become really expensive space observatories. But both of these naturally have a lot of problems associated with them. For one of them it's the location, it's kind of difficult to travel back and forth from a region somewhere far away. And with the other ones, the ones in space, it's usually the inability to upgrade them and of course the actual costs associated with not just launching such telescopes but also designing them to be able to survive in space for years and possibly decades. And even though Hubble telescope was designed to be upgradable and modular, because the space shuttle mission has now been cancelled, as you probably have learned from one of the recent videos, it's just a matter of time now before the Hubble telescope fails permanently. And so because of this, a lot of NASA scientists have been working on some sort of middle grounds. Something that can still take us way above most of the atmosphere, but something that is not going to break the bank and also something that can be upgraded. And that something is a balloon telescope. Or I'm sure we'll come up with a much cooler name for them in the future. And so back in 2016, NASA has officially launched and successfully tested what's known as the super pressure balloon. Now this is a little bit different from your typical balloon and also from a typical scientific balloon, mostly because the overall shape it creates at the end and also the design of the actual material it's made out of. So for example when inflated, this super pressure balloon is humongous. They compare it to the size of a football field. But at the same time the structure itself is made in such a way that when it's inflated it becomes extremely strong. It's almost impossible for this balloon to rip and because of this NASA has been able to test this for several months. In other words, after the initial launch, this was able to circulate around the planet for at least 100 days, with the eventual goal being almost a year. And that's actually pretty impressive, especially because these are not very expensive to make, these also are for the most part extremely easy to upgrade and more importantly the total cost of this project was about one thousandth of the Hubble telescope. Which of course also means that we could hypothetically launch hundreds and even thousands of these and observe the night skies with even more precision than the Hubble. Something that was previously probably not actually possible but is now definitely a reality because of these new super pressure balloons. Now I'm posting the link for this in the description below if you want to learn more about it. But that's basically what the team behind Supervit project decided to do. They decided to combine these super pressure balloons from NASA and build a slightly smaller version of the Hubble telescope that's going to be attached to the balloon and launched for several months to orbit the planet and to take incredible photos of the universe. And because it's going to be orbiting above about 99.5% of the entire atmosphere, it does not have to worry about these unusual perturbations 
or really any atmospheric effects that are normally produced by ground telescopes. And so, what do we know so far about this project and how exactly is it going to work? So first of all, the video you see right here, this was filmed back in 2016 during the first initial stages of testing. Since then, the telescope has been upgraded a lot and the scientists have been able to create something that looks like this. It's a smaller version of a typical space telescope. The size of the mirror here is about 50 centimeters, which is significantly smaller than the one on Hubble and of course the one on the James Webb telescope but it's still large enough to be able to see a lot of things. And if this mission works well, the scientists are planning to upgrade the size of the mirror, making it about one and a half meters, which is actually just a little bit smaller than the mirror on Hubble. This right here is about 2.4 meters in size, and the maximum size for the Superbit is about two meters. So it's almost a Hubble telescope. And when launched, it's going to be circulating the planet at an altitude of about 40 kilometers in the air. And because these are helium balloons, they can actually stay in the air for an extremely long time, until they pop. But in this case, they are designed not to pop. They do lose helium really, really slowly over time, and because of this, the altitude does decrease, but by then the mission is already finished. More importantly though, back in 2019, the scientists behind this mission were able to successfully demonstrate the ability to stabilize this telescope creating just as much sharpness as an actual Hubble telescope, which is really impressive. It means that despite any kind of a shaking or moving that it's going to be doing up in the air, the actual images are still going to be extremely sharp, with this right here being a perfect example. But even though this is not the first time a scientific experiment has been done in the upper atmosphere, this would be the first time that an actual telescope is launched that high. But more importantly, this would be the first time that a balloon would actually be used for an optical telescope to observe various regions in the universe. With the mission itself being really simple, you launch the balloon and then it sort of circulates around the planet following the winds, working at night and trying to take as many pictures of the universe as it can during the nighttime, while then using its solar panels to recharge during the day. And with the total mission cost of about $5 million, this would definitely open up an opportunity for many different universities and many different researchers to be able to join in and to participate in similar missions or even to create their own. With the most important feature being the same one as on the Hubble telescope, it's going to be so easy to upgrade this after every mission is finished. Because cameras generally improve every few years, every time the optics are upgraded on this telescope, its actual resolution and of course its ability to take incredible pictures, at least hypothetically, could turn this into one of the most important telescopes in operation. And with the official demise of Hubble telescope sometime in the next few years, the Superbit telescope is going to remain as the only telescope capable of very beautiful high resolution multicolor pictures and even ultraviolet observations, something that currently Hubble telescope is really famous for. But since it's already running on its backup computers, and those computers are also extremely old, it's only a matter of time before Hubble fails completely, and of course for good. And according to the team behind Superbit, they even suggest that in a few years, when the cameras get really really good and also when the lenses are improved quite dramatically, eventually this might even become a larger instrument and a more capable instrument than the Hubble telescope. And if there are a lot of these balloons flying around collecting a lot of pictures, their power can also be combined to create some sort of an Earth-sized telescope. This is of course something that a lot of scientists are hoping to create in the next decade or so. For now though, it's definitely a great first step and the official mission that's going to be launched from New Zealand in April of 2022 is going to be an important first step in advancing our ability to learn more about the universe and to try to solve a lot of mysteries in outer space. And so these balloon telescopes could actually become the future of telescopes on the planet. Cheaper to operate, much easier to upgrade, and way way easier to produce even for a smaller university. Assuming of course there's still helium around. We are actually sort of running out of helium. But we'll talk more about this in some of the future videos. But as you can probably imagine, it's also going to very likely increase the amount of so-called UFO reports. As a matter of fact, one of the few times I have officially seen a UFO somewhere out there was when I saw some sort of a strange sparkling circular object moving across the atmosphere really, really far away. Now, back then I was really young, so I had no idea what I was looking at. But later on, I learned that this was actually a scientific experiment launched on a typical stratospheric balloon. But because of the unusual shape of this particular balloon that the scientists even refer to as the pumpkin balloon, with the actual shape sort of resembling a flying saucer, I can only imagine what's going to happen in a few years when we have a lot of these flying around everywhere, 
taking the pictures of the night skies. But I guess we'll worry about this when the time comes. For now, well first of all, huge congratulations to the entire team behind this project and second of all, I can't wait for this to be launched and for this to start producing incredible results. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, check out the relevant links in the description below and share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. Maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below. And either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.